so you don't know how to control your materials. Not a problem. Now if you're new to 3D, don't worry, I'll make this real simple. The material editor is just a way for you to manipulate images with math. That's it. Literally it. That is all you're going to do in this area. And just about all of the manipulation you'll ever want to do is really built on two fundamental techniques. The first one is tile control. To set it up, right click, create a texture coordinate node, hold M and left click to get a multiply node, right click and get an append node, then hold S and left click twice to make two parameter nodes. Name the first one tile X and the second one dial Y. And when you plug it all together into the UVs, changing the X parameter will make the image expand and contract left and right, and changing the Y parameter will make the image expand and contract up and down. Okay, you're halfway there. All right, now the last thing that you need to know how to do is control movement. Now technically you can use a panner node for this, but I personally just like to do it this way. Right click and grab a time node. Hold S and left click twice to create two parameters and name them speed X and speed Y. Then hold M and left click to get a multiply node and then just use another append node. Plug everything together like so. And if you hold A and left click, you'll get an add node, which is how we're going to put it all together. And from this point, if we change these variables, the image will start to move. X controls the horizontal speed and Y controls the vertical speed. Now some of you might be wondering, what's the point? Why does this matter? Well, the truth is just about every material effect you've ever seen is gonna use some version of this. If you wanna make lava flow across a surface, this is how you do it. If you want water to move across a surface, this is how you do it. If you wanna make force fields with pulsing energy, then you're gonna have some version of this to do it. Now once you've got the material, and if you just wanna see what it looks like in your game, instead of just dragging the material directly onto your object, I think it's a lot more useful for you to right click on your material, create a material instance, then drag the instance onto the object instead. And this way, if we open up the instance, you'll see we have options for the four parameters that we created. And if we change these values, you'll be able to see them update in real time. So these are the two core fundamentals of material manipulation. If you're new to this whole thing and that's all you understood, then you're still off to a pretty good start. So I hope that helps and as always, hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you around.